Hello everyone, Jen here. I'm responding to some requests that I got from some folks who were asking how I take some of the photos that I post on my Twitter. So I've been taking photos on Ghost of Tsushima for about two years now, and I have definitely taken a lot. Uh, I think my latest count now is approaching 15,000 photos in the game. And this was actually the first game I ever tried doing photo mode and things like that, so it was really just training from the ground up, uh, being self-taught and just looking at other people's photos and figuring out what I liked the best. So I figured I can make a small tutorial at least of how I personally take my photos. I'm not a professional photographer, but uh, perhaps you can get some cool tips uh, from some of the things I learned personally. Um, typically my favorite types of photos to take are actually profiles of the various characters in the game. So I have probably thousands of photos of Jin personally, but then lots of other NPCs. And I just really enjoy any sorts of expressions or action photos. And then, of course, landscapes are wonderful to have as well. If you can have both at the same time, a good character shot as well as a good landscape, I think that makes a, a very nicely balanced photo. So let's go first look for a spot where I could take a photo today. All right, so I happened to come across uh, a couple of enemies here, which would be pretty interesting to do a standoff with in this scenario. So let's see if I can get that to happen. You see there's a tree in the way here. I wonder if I can make sure that it's not in the photo or whatever I'm doing. It's going to be hard to control, but let's see here. My favorite types of photos are the ones where you simply find an event in the game where you're not really planning for it. Maybe some mild planning, such as noticing an encounter or something like that. But really, the best photos are the ones that you don't expect and you don't plan for. In this case, let's try to see what kinds of things we can do with the photo. First off, I think this looks really great as is, and you can certainly take a photo just in the moment. I'll take photos as we go along with the process. See, this is basically an unedited photo, just a little bit of zooming in, but there's no depth of field or color changes or anything like that. So this is square one. And then we will move on from there. So of course, I enjoy having a little bit of depth of field to give a little more focus on our characters. But you can't have too much of it. If you put too much blur in the background, it actually gives focus to the blur rather than the character. So actually you want it to just be just the littlest bit so it's not being distracting. Now I have a couple of favorite color schemes that I like to do in games. So right now, Jin's armor is broken, has colors of blue, white, and red, a little bit of black. This person also happens to wear red, which is nice. So let's try something I have recently explored around with, and it's uh, the maple color grade. This particular lighting makes it look like there's just a big white spot in the sky, but what you actually want to take a look at is how it emphasizes the armor that uh, these characters are wearing. So uh, this character actually stands out quite well in Maple. You can check the different weathers to see how that changes the sky right now. I 
I feel for this region, you want uh, a weather type that really emphasizes not this guy, but actually just the, the flowers and everything that's around. So. Even fog would be an interesting choice, except that it doesn't emphasize uh, the armor very much. But you have other options here. So, for example, let's change the time of day. So right now it's dawn, but you can change the angle on the characters' faces to see how that changes things. lighting like this, it really brings out the red in Jin's armor. Ideally, I do like photos where his whole face can be eliminated, but if you can get half of the face, it's also great. Even like that. It gives a lot of depth to the photo to do something like that. Right now the uh, other character who's in the background, he's kind of obscured in shadow, but we can leave him as is for now. I want to make sure our two main focuses are, are bright. We can bring focus once again just to our forefront here. And then we can do something that I have explored recently, which is working with the color contrast and the exposure bias. So, one of my favorite combinations is to go something between like 1.6 or in other types of color schemes go to about 2.3. You can get some really interesting uh, contrasts that really make the color stand out. I'm going to go with the 1.6 here. I'll take this photo right here just for the initial attempt. Now something that I learned recently, um, I don't have a term for it because I'm not a photographer, but having a light source coming from behind actually gives a lot of um, texture and dynamic to the photo. So when the light is shining on the left side, instead of just straight on or from behind, it's good to have something on the side instead, but also from behind. This one actually is turning out quite well. I liked that I was able to get the Ronin to not just have his sword by his side, but actually in a action pose, which is pretty cool. Now we also can try other color schemes and see if we can adjust other things within the photo. If we can make the, the uh, flowers different colors. Just bring out different things about that, and then you really focus on the texture. Now that the sun is on this side, you can have a whole totally different mood. So instead of red, now the really focus is just blue. The ginkgo color grade also brings out some unusual effects that the trees are suddenly a yellow color. I don't use ginkgo a lot, but I actually use it more for uh, scenes with fire in them as opposed to sunlight. But you can certainly come up with your own things. Actually, I like this one a lot. Now the uh, flower field is not red whatsoever. It's actually just a, a totally different focus on the thing. Let's give that one a try. Again, add a little bit of depth of field 
just so you emphasize the uh, foreground and just bring the background uh, some extra colors. Um, I do notice that the more blur you have, there's some interesting uh, color variations that can occur there. So. Speaking of weather, there are other tricks that you can explore with the animation mode. I will give a, little, a couple examples of that later. Ah, you can see my horse in the background there. Perhaps I can capture it as well. Generally, I like to have both characters be clear, so not just one or the other, but you're free to try whatever. I might want to make sure the horse is also somewhat clear and not too blurred out. By the way, as I'm doing all of this, I have increased the exposure and the contrast, so this is not just normal Ginkgo, it's um, a combination of other features. Even here, red does not look as interesting as the golden one with the ginkgo. I do also enjoy changing the expression of Jin whenever I have a chance. One of my favorite expressions that was uh, updated in the director's cut is his angry face. I think it has a lot of uh, has a lot of nuance to it. And in this case would work very well in regards to facing off of the Ronin. Let's go back to just regular and see what we can do with that. I do like autumn a lot because it makes the greens become more orange. Sometimes it feels a little more natural. I think if I remove some of these other features, you can get something a little more natural as well. I'm trying to make sure that Jin is fully in the light here. Like so. And perhaps for one last photo in this scene, I'm going to have a focus on Jin's face, which at the moment is looking down on the Ronin. Give a little, little bit of a character moment here. It's a shame that in Ghost of Tsushima we do have these kind of clipping issues where the arms and everything go outside of the, the cosmetics, but. Um, it's kind of difficult to fix because you would rather, you know, let the characters just do their animations normally instead of having their hats fall off or something. <laughs> okay. Now that we have taken the photos in this scene, let's just leave as is. And now, in order to get out of photo mode without ruining the standoff, you want to be pressing the uh, triangle button while you're pressing exit so that he will still be holding on to his sword. So let's do that. Now we got a classic standoff pose here. I happen to have the charm on that greatly increases the blood effect. So, now that we're in a little more dramatic stage, let's do something with the weather. So I want to explore a couple of things here. So let's, because now that Jin has kind of changed his face uh, angle and everything, we can change the time of day. 
and bring out some other things. I would like to show you all guys something that I do if I want to catch a lightning bolt in the sky. So right now I just switched over to thunder mode and there's no lightning bolt in the sky right now but if you quickly switch the button on and off sometimes it takes two buttons to uh, two fingers to do this um, you want to click on and off really fast and you will catch one in the sky like that but there are some other tricks that you can do to actually use lightning in other sources so it's unfortunate that these trees would be right in the way here but perhaps I can finish off or I can have the lightning bolt in a different direction and that works too. Usually it will be in the screen of whatever you're facing towards. We'll catch a little glimpse right there and add just a little bit of blur to make it look more focused there but there are a few little tricks I know how to do. So if you... There's a way to actually glitch the thunderbolt in the sky if you know how to do it right. You can switch thunder out like that. So now it's blank. And you keep the animation off. If you exit and join in very fast, sometimes you can catch a lightning bolt and often it will be glitched out if you do that. So let's see if that effect still works. There we go. Caught a lightning bolt in the sky. Now in my experience, I can show you a couple of demonstrative photos of how I've done this in the past. That lightning bolt should be glitched out. So if I change the weather, it should still stay in the sky, but let's just find out if it's been patched or not. Aha! Uh -huh. Nope, it still is definitely there. So this is a, a fun little trick I discovered on my own that these lightning bolts can be frozen in space. And not just lightning, but also rain can be glitched out too in the same manner. So if you wanted to get a different kind of photo. Perhaps something like that, right? Where it's obviously raining and a thunderstorm at the same time. You can do these kind of effects. Okay, so what if I try to combine rain and lightning at the same time? So that process is a little bit different. Let's turn the animation back on here. Let there be just like a little bit of rain. And then freeze it. So let's do that again. We exit and enter in as fast as possible. The lightning bolt, or the rain should be glitched out. Ah, I accidentally pressed the <laughs> animation on again. Let's try that again. There we go. So these little raindrops should be frozen. If I change to a new weather pattern, it should stay in the sky. Yep. And everything is wet too, by the way. We've created a kind of interesting effect here where it is raining, but actually it's a little bit sunny as well. I believe I have storm lighting on here. If I just do normal, I think you can see the difference. So it looks like maybe it's a 
you know, um, a day with scattered storms. So you see a little bit of the sun peeking out, but it's also raining. You can only catch it for this one instance. If I were to turn the animation back on, they will disappear immediately. So. This is the bee fog. And here's raining. All of a sudden, it just starts raining out of the blue. A little bit of realism. Let's do... Let's do this one. This is, uh... What is it? Overcast? Yeah, let's do that. But here's what I wanted to show you next. So, if you wanted to combine the raindrops with lightning, all you have to do is very quickly switch on and off again. And if you're fast enough, you can maintain the raindrops in the sky and keep a lightning bolt at the same time. So, let's see if it works out. Ah, so we did get a lightning bolt. It's a little bit way out in the distance there, but we definitely got something. So that works. This lightning bolt will not be glitched. If you move out, it will disappear. And I guess you could try again here. Ah, so it just continues to stay in the background. But that's okay. We can leave it as is. And now it looks like Jin is fighting in the thunderstorm rather than just thunder in the distance. Maybe to bring out the stormy aspect you can add a little bit of there I think would be nice. And of course you can do this with uh, nighttime effects as well. If I were to switch into the nighttime you'd probably see a very different set of colors the moon and everything. Even if you change the clear skies, the, uh, the lightning bolt will not stay, but the rain will. You'll have it raining and clear skies at the same time. I'm try all these combinations. I actually really like Vivid for uh, night scenes. Right now the sky is quite a bit brighter than it would be naturally, but if you turn down some effects here, you can create a pretty uh, realistic lighting for a night scene. So. As you can see right now, the Ronin is a little bit glitched out with its clothing, but uh, that often happens if you just look away for a second and you look back, it often glitches stuff out, so that just happens. You can see right now, Jin practically lost both of his uh, shoulder pads, and that's like a, a weird thing that sometimes happens. Let's go back to the original weather and just reset everything that we had. So it was currently sunbreak when we were with him. Yes, ever wanted to take a photo of Jin without his shoulder guards whatsoever? This is what you can get. Something kind of unique. Makes you wonder where did that uh, thing go actually. It looks like it's uh, cramped here behind his head. That's where the, the shoulder pad went. But as of now, looks like he has just the tier one clan armor that happens to be broken. You can produce some really unusual effects that way. There's so much blood in the scene that it's kind of hard to 
get a good shot. So let's try this one. Now it looks like his shoulder pad is fixed. This happens often when you uh, leave the animation frozen like this. Again, we can explore other options too. We can have particles and see how um, the uh, depth of field and coloring can change the particles as well. In this area, I'd say probably the nicest particle that we could use is something that's a little bit reddish, but also matches um, what we have. So I think ash and ashes and embers would probably be the best thing, even though there's no buildings around or anything. Other options we could have would be dragonflies, which I almost never use, mainly because they're hard to see on the photos. They're just very small and in the distance. This would actually be pretty accurate to a flower field. You can't really tell that these are purple petals. You can say, and just say that, oh, there must be some red to them. Especially if you go into maple mode, then it just looks like red petals. So we could try something like that. If you don't want the petals to be going that direction, you can change it with wind direction and all that. How about for now, let us make the petals go to the left, from right to left, like that. I think right now keeping it right there is a, a good time of day. So let's just find a good pose here where the petals look fairly natural, not covering up their faces or anything. Now it looks like the blood and the petals have all kind of merged together into this big scene with lots of particles. So. I'd rather want to keep their faces as bright as possible, but not too bright. Something like that would be okay. And of course, one of the favorite things to do is to catch one of his uh, blood flick animations. I believe his... Uh, right now his shoulder pad is just kind of in position no matter if I have it animated or not. Our enemies are already down on the ground, so not much we can do with them, but we could try to keep them a little bit in the screen. The victims of Jin lay behind him. Also, I believe this might be too many particles to feel realistic for the scene, so let us let us tone it down just a little bit. Maybe 25%. Now let's reset it. There. And lastly here, let's explore a little bit about camera angle. I notice some of the more aesthetically pleasing angles are ones that will bring some sort of sharp point in the subject uh, to be, make it parallel to one of the lines of the photo itself. So the, uh, the height and width. So an ideal look would be to make either the sword pointing down towards the corner of the screen, so roughly right there, and then you have a perfect diagonal, 
Same with the uh, sword kit that he has. Or in this case, now we're making uh, the sword kit be parallel to the the horizontal line. So could do an angle totally like that, and then you get a, a perfect diagonal across the screen. Those are fun things to try out. And I recommend you try these as well. They're just different ways of taking photos instead of, you know, straight up, up, up and down. I still like that these petals in the distance, they have a, a red light to them, which is nice. If I were to change it to other things as well. I'm actually a big fan of uh, very bright light on Jim's face, so I usually go for something like that. And last but not least, the one thing I want to show you all guys is how to take a really nice photo where you can just let the animation sit around him. And then it's kind of like a screensaver. So if you're able to capture maybe like 30 seconds of a scene. If you're concerned about making sure that the character is centered, I like to use these stamps. Since there is no grid in Ghost of Tsushima, you have to use uh, some other item to track the balance of the photo. So you know exactly where Jin is. I like to use this one, Stamp 5, which is just the uh, clan symbol. Make sure it's centered on his chest here, like that. I usually remove it <laughs> before the, I actually take the photo, so... Make sure we got the autofocus on. You can certainly change that around manually if you want to bring out something else, but I prefer to keep the whole image of Jin. Uh, it as clear as possible. You can see this is 25% violet petals, but that's still quite a bit of petals in the breeze, so makes for something nice. And there you have it. This was a very basic example of how I like to take photos and what kind of angles and things I appreciate. And there's a lot more different kinds of environments I can explore, but I do really enjoy um, some of these basic techniques that I demonstrated here today. So, if you'd like to see more, I can certainly post another little tutorial of how to get a good photo, and I can focus on different things the next time. So, thank you all for watching.